Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and today I'm going to show you how to make this bubble stitch dishcloth. Super easy and quick. And uh, this one doesn't have a border, and this one I just put a border on. It's pretty basic and easy, so uh, let me show you what you need to make it. You need an H crochet hook, which is a 5mm, a yarn needle, some scissors, and some worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm actually using acrylic yarn today for the tutorial because I can't find any worsted weight cotton in my stash. But uh, to make a dishcloth or washcloth, you're going to want cotton yarn. To get started, make a slip knot with your yarn and attach it to your hook. Now, chain 25 chains. Okay, there's your chains. Now skip the first chain and single crochet in the neck, the second chain from the hook. And then continue to single crochet all the way down the chain. You'll have a total of 24 single crochets at the end. Okay, so at the end of row one, you should have 24 single crochets, and row one is the first row of a four row repeat that you will be doing over and over <laughs> to get the desired length of your dishcloth. So row one in the four row repeat is just single crochet all the way across. Now for row two of the repeat, which is the first puff row, you will chain one and turn single crochet into the first stitch and then in the next stitch you're going to make your first puff and to do that yarn over and insert your hook into that stitch yarn over and pull through you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over and go into that stitch again the same one yarn over and pull through now you'll have five loops now yarn over and go into that stitch one more time and pull up another now you have seven loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all seven loops. Now, in a, a normal puff stitch, you would chain one to close up that puff, but for this pattern, we're not going to do that. So after you pull through your seven loops, go into the next stitch and single crochet, and then single crochet the next stitch. Now that's the first little repeat. Your repeat for the rest of this row will be puff, single, single, puff, single, single, all the way down. And you can see how your puff is poking out now. So into the next stitch, you're going to make another puff stitch. So yarn over, go through and pull up one for three, yarn over, go back in and pull up another one for five, and then yarn over and pull up another one for seven. Yarn over and go through all seven. And then the next two stitches, single crochet. One, two. And now you're going to repeat that all the way down to the last two stitches.
Okay, so now you've done that repeat all the way down, which is puff, single, single, puff, single, single. And now at the end, you have two stitches remaining. So in the first stitch, you're going to make another puff. And then single crochet the last stitch. And now you finish the first puff row and it's the second row in the four row repeat. So now the third row in the four row repeat is another row of just single crochet. So chain one and turn and then single crochet in every stitch all the way across. It'll be 24 in total. Okay, so now that was the third row in the four row repeat, and it was 24 stitches all together. So now the next row is going to be the fourth row in the four row repeat, and it's the second puff stitch row. So chain one and turn. And now for this row, you're going to single crochet the first three stitches. And what this does, going three stitches in instead of just one, it's going to off-center the next row of puff stitches from this first row. That way they won't be in a straight row, but they'll be diagonally in rows. And I think it just gives a better look. But um, you could make them straight if you wanted, but I like the diagonal ones. <laughs> so now after you do three single crochets, in the fourth stitch, do a puff. Now, single crochet the next two stitches. You'll be doing the same repeat for this row as you did for the original puff row. So you will puff, single, single, puff, single, single, all the way across. Okay, now you're at the end of round four, row four, and now you can see that the puff stitches are diagonal to each other instead of straight on top of each other. And now, to make your dishcloth or washcloth as long as you would like, all you gotta do is repeat the last four rows. And the amount of times you repeat it is really up to you, because if you want to make a square dishcloth, what I do to make square ones is as you work you would fold it and see so this one's not a square because its ends don't meet up but I think I was just trying to use up some of this yarn but uh, you would just repeat those four rows over and over until it's the desired length that you like and if you did want it to be a square you would just as you add rows you would fold it and when it got 
even, it would be a square. This one's more of a rectangle. <laughs> but um, yeah, so just keep repeating those four rows as many times as you'd like to um, make your dishcloth. Here's my cloth so far. So we did the first four rows here, and then I repeated the four row repeat for a total of six times. So I, after I did the first four, I repeated it five more times. And it doesn't make a perfect square, but it's good enough, I think. Well, it's pretty close to being perfect, I guess. Look at that. <laughs> so now, um, your last row of the four repeat is a puff row. So to finish it off and make it nice and even, um, I'm going to go ahead and do another row of single crochet all the way across. So for that, you would just chain one, turn your work, and do 24 single crochet all the way across. Alright, so there is the dishcloth all the way done. It needs to be stretched a little. And now here's the little one that I did with cotton yarn. And then I did do another one with that same cotton yarn, but I went ahead and made a border. And this border is a super simple uh, single crochet border, but I will show you how to do that real quick if you're interested. So when you stop right here in the corner, what I do is in the same space that I um, stopped in, I will go ahead and put two more single crochet. And that turns the work so I'm working down this side bit. And then you want it single crochet evenly around the side. And the way that I do that is like this space right here was the turning space. I will put one single crochet in that. And then right here, there's a hole right there created from the stitch. I just go in there and put a single crochet. And then there's the turning space again. So I put one there. And then in that hole created by the row of single crochets. And that makes it fairly even all the way down. So I just continue that all the way down to the next corner. Putting one single crochet in the, the chain space and one in the single crochet. It really doesn't matter where you put your stitches or really how many as long as it's not all clustered up or super spread apart. You just want to keep it kind of even all the way around so that it looks nice. And the more you do these random borders the better you get at knowing where to place your single crochets or whatever stitch you're using for a border. And then down here at the end, this just happens to be my starting chain, right there's my end. So in it, I will put three single crochet. And what that does is it turns your work so that you can start working now along the bottom of your piece, which is also the back side of the starting chain. And again, it really doesn't matter how many single crochets you put, just you don't want to put too many so that it starts rippling. You just want to work evenly and throw some single crochets in there. When it's the bottom of the starting chain like this, you can kind of work in the bottom loops of the starting chain. That way you get pretty much the exact amount of stitches you need to stay even. And I guess if you wanted it to be perfect, you could count and make sure you had the right a number of stitches down here as you do up at the top and on both of the sides but I'm not a perfectionist I'm just gonna wing it <laughs> and then again when you get to the corner 
put three single crochet and that'll turn you to work on the other side of your square and do the same thing as you did on this opposite side And again, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because no one's going to know but you. <laughs> Unless you just point out your mistakes to people, no one will ever know. And then we're up at the corner again, so in this first stitch you're going to want to put three single crochets. And that turns you to work across the top. And if you didn't want to uh, make the border any larger than just one, you could just slip stitch into the same place that you single did the three single crochets. If I can get a slip stitch to work. And then you can fasten off and leave it at that. Or you could keep going around and around and around, making the border as large as you want. Just in the corners where there are three single crochets, in the one in the middle, put three single crochets in that. That'll keep the corners from rippling up and also will turn your work so that you can work along the other edges. And I think for this one, I did two rows of single crochet, maybe three, all the way around. And you could do any kind of border you wanted, really. But yeah, so that's the dishcloth. So you would cut your yarn and weave in your two ends, or however many, if you changed colors. And that's your dishcloth. <laughs> Pretty simple and quick. The back side should be nice and flat, no bubbles or puffs. And the front will be nice and textured. It'll be great for cleaning off dishes or using on your face to help exfoliate it a little bit. And yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it if you think someone else will. And I'll see you guys next video. Bye, guys.